Okay, happy Friday, everyone. This is Maim um, with the Coaching Empire Holistic Mindset Hour. Um, and I wanted, I prepared this presentation because um, in case there were people that couldn't make it at the time that we have allotted for, um, you know, for Mindset Hour, but still would like to take advantage of, of, um, of the coaching. So this, this uh, coaching presentation is about resilience building strategies to balance back from setbacks, okay? Now, I really love this quote by Nelson Mandela. Um, he said that the greatest glory in living lies not in never falling, but in rising every time we fall. It's by Nelson Mandela. And it reminds me of the Bible quote also. It says something in, I think it's in Proverbs. It says, the righteous fall seven times and then gets up again. Same um, same, um, same thought, you know, same principle. And this, this picture in the background, um, it actually came, uh, automatically from Canva, but I was like, this is the perfect picture for this quote, because when I look at a forest, you know, you hear stories, you know, news stories and stuff like that. And, um, you know, if you watch documentaries, like science documentaries, um, you will learn that, forests they can seem completely just obliterated by a forest fire you know and all the livestock uh, not livestock all the wild animals um can be driven from their homes and there's nothing left but seemingly nothing left but ashes and rubble but <laughs> yet you know not too long you start seeing green you start seeing growth um, you know, the, the bottoms of those trees they actually have huge roots that are sometimes taller than what you see above the soil. And that's all of us. You know, we may seem, you know, very devastated at certain points in our lives, but, you know, we are, we are human beings. You know, I believe that we are made in the divine image and there's so there's, are there are things so much deeper and greater about our souls that cannot be touched by by any single circumstance, any kind of devastation. I don't care if you've lost, you know, all your money, your whole business has fallen, you know, even death in the family, right? We we there's there are things within us that are greater than all the tragedies that we face in life, and there will be rebirth, there will be growth even after devastation. And even if it's not devastation, even if it's just like, you know, a small forest fire that you have to have to put out, you know, there, you know, there will be regrowth. Okay. So one thing that we have to do in order to build resilience is we have to understand resilience. Okay. And resilience is not about avoiding conflict or stress or, or, um, you know, challenges, devastation. It's about preparing ourselves for enduring these challenges and also growing from them okay there are things that we can do to prepare ourselves resilient behaviors can be learned and developed sure there may be some people that are you know more resilient from birth maybe because of their dna or whatever and uh, partly nature partly nurture but everyone can work on themselves to build greater resilience okay that's what personal development is all about right and of course, we have to embrace a growth mindset, probably as coaches, everyone who's a coach will, will understand these things. But there's a lot of people that don't know about these, these things. Um, and, you know, we have to view challenges as opportunities for growth, instead of complaining about them, see them as, oh, this is a stepping stone in my life's journey, in my business journey, you know, in my marriage. This, this conflict that we're having, this is just, this is a way to grow closer to my spouse. This is a way for me to be a better entrepreneur, you know, better leader, et cetera, so that we can shift our perspective from, I can't handle this. This is too much for me. You know, these are things that I say sometimes to, okay, wait a minute. What can I learn from this? What is, what's the universe trying to tell me? What is God trying to teach me from this challenge? Okay. No pain, no game. Another thing that we can do to prepare for um, for challenges to build our resilience is to build a strong support network. Oh, that's misspelled. Oh my goodness. 
I should say support network landscape. Sorry, I'm just going to go ahead and change that right now. <laughs> Since um, y'all don't like it. Okay, hold on. Build your support network landscape. Okay, that makes that makes more sense. Okay, let's get back. Okay, so at the Coaching Empire, of course, you know, we have um, Mike Drigger's Open Office Hours, which is excellent, excellent. But there's so many other resources, right? There's My Mindset Hour. There's Ryan's Accountability Hour, um, right? And there's so many more. I mean, there's, um, I know there's a brand strategy. Sometimes we have podcasting um, hour. There's so many things. It's so much harder to do things alone. You have to tap into the resources that you have. And if you belong to a faith group, you know, um, tap into that for emotional, spiritual support. Um, I, I know social media gets a lot of bad rap, but if you, if you, if your social media is filled with positivity instead of a lot of negativity and good friends and stuff like that, that can also be a source of support. Um, so basically cultivate relationships with friends, family, mentors, and peers, whether it's online, you know, support groups or in person. I think you need both really. I really like the online um, portion because online can always be there, right? You can always have your online friends there with you. You don't have to go out and set an hour to meet at a coffee shop or whatever, but then the physical, you know, the physical touch um, from your family, you know, or just the presence of, of talking to someone and feeling their in-person vibration can be extremely helpful and supportive. And then also, um, uh, uh, you know, a supportive ne network can be a source of not only encouragement, but also, of course, collective wisdom. Okay. Um, I love getting not just one opinion, but multiple, not even just two opinions. I love getting multiple opinions, as many trusted opinions as I can get about a matter. It's so valuable. Okay. Next is to embrace a growth. Wait, did we, did we do that? Yeah, yeah, we already did that. Sorry. Okay, next is to develop emotional intelligence. It's important to understand and manage our emotions and not just react to them or with them, but just stop and think like, hey, I'm 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 angry right now. It's something that I face, you know, that's one of my weaknesses. Hey, I'm angry right now. Instead of just acting on my anger, like why? Wait a minute, why am I angry? Am I angry at my child? Not really. It's not his fault, right? Am I angry at, you know, um, this this other thing? Well, not really. It's not it's not that fault. I, you know what? I, I'm I'm angry because this has eaten up my time. <laughs> and get to the root of your anger, get to the root of your emotions so that you know how to solve them properly instead of, you know, maybe blowing up or buffering with something unhealthy, you know, like, you know sugar or you know cigarette or something like that <laughs> you know doing something constructive about your emotions because our emotions are are not bad our emotions are our body telling us things you know important things this is important feedback that our body is giving us so it's important to use mindfulness to think about our emotions and to meditate on how we can improve our emotions in a constructive way instead of a destructive way that we might later regret, right? And then of course we have to take care of our physical healing, our physical health, I mean, sorry, health or healing, depending on your current situation. Physical health has a huge impact on our emotional resilience. I mean, we can see in little kids when they don't get enough sleep, of course they're going to um, they're going to be more upset. They're going to be more angry. They're going to be more, you know, whiny, whatever. And it's the same thing for adults. We might be able to manage our emotions a little bit better, but not totally. And instead of, you know, maybe being whiny, it can affect our work and it, it can affect our mindset. It, it can affect our goals and our, our visions and our, you know, whether we accomplish the things that we set out to do or not. So sleep, um, exercise, extremely important. And also good nutrition. Um, so those are all very, very important. And, and then um, we should also be setting realistic goals every single day that are actually accomplishable and take action on them. We can build resilience through small, achievable steps and break goals into actionable tasks to build confidence. Now, I, I, do, I, do, um, I do believe in the, setting these small goals, but I also... 
I should have made a slide for this. I also believe in setting grand visions that can never be accomplished with one day or one goal. So we've got to have these little actionable goals that we can accomplish. And then we've got to have our grand vision, which may be impossible goals that we may or may not be able to um, accomplish ever. Maybe not. But like if you were guaranteed success, what would you work on? Because just because you can't accomplish it, that doesn't mean that it won't get accomplished, especially if it's a, a, a grand enough one, you know, a worthy enough one, one that, you know, let's say humanity should set for itself, you know, and a lot of times businesses are, um, very successful businesses are built on these very grand visions, you know, like Tesla, you know, it's not about making money off of selling a car. It's about, you know, saving the environment and, you know, much grander visions and, you know, when, um, I, I, even, even like, uh, what's it called? Um, not Bill Gates, but the Apple guy, Steve Jobs. There you go. I remember he set out to, you know, put a device in everyone's hand that could, where you could check your email and watch shows and communicate with people and share pictures. I'm like, that's, I was like, that's stupid. Who, who would want that? I don't want that. <laughs> I'm like, of course I want that now. He had a grand vision. To, to, to do something that no one had ever done before. And that I thought was ridiculous, but he had that vision. And so I believe in visions when, 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 you know, you have something in your heart that sounds maybe impossible. It's like, well, maybe, maybe you're the one that needs to do that because every great thing that has ever been built or created was once thought of as impossible by the majority of people, right? So these big visions are also very uh, worthy. Now, uh, Margaret Thatcher, once said, I hope I hope she said this, <laughs> um, but kind of on the internet, on online. But she she once said that you may have to fight a battle more than once to win it. Whether she said it or not, it's absolutely true. Um, you you'll never win a war um, with one battle, but sometimes even a battle you can't win the first time. So you've got to keep on going and don't let um, setbacks, naysayers, you know, negative talk from other people, negative comments anything like that set you back expect to you know spend at least seven times <laughs> fighting this battle until you win it actually i think that's better better um better perspective Ex if you expect to to try seven times before you achieve it then if you if you if it only takes you five times you'll be happy right you exceeded your goal resilience is built through practice of course we know that um trainer uh, physical trainers trainers definitely know that so we have to learn to navigate life's challenges with grace, grace towards ourselves, as well as towards others and strength to build our resilience. So thank you so much for, um, oh shoot, my goodness, I did not even, oh yeah, I did record it, great.